boom we are alive ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining us today we're going to be taking a look at bitcoin's price we're going to over just general market sentiment um which means we're going to take a look at ethereum i want to look at link fetch which we went over last time is up 50 percent since that previous video um, and just in general, I want to talk about market sentiment because I think it's always one of the most difficult things to try to understand. So we're going to do something a little bit different here. Um, we're looking at CoinGecko today uh, to start off the charts. Now, I love CoinGecko. I've been friend, uh, friends with Bobby Ong, the CEO over there. They do a great job of aggregating data. Uh, but just for fun, over the last seven days, you've seen a 12% growth in Bitcoin, 8% in Ethereum. Um, across the board, Solana up 20%, Cardano 15%, Chainlink up 12%. This, to me, signals a big shift in character. We haven't seen a change in character like this in quite some time. And when, when we're going through our charting and our market uh, sentiment analysis, one of the things we look for are these big changes. So what I want to do now is actually focus in on Bitcoin here for a second. So this is Bitcoin open on the daily. Uh, we've been following this chart for quite some time. Um, we highlighted again that the FTX crash was the effective spring. Blood in the streets, although most of the time is uh, literal, it is also figurative as well, which means that in that moment, that was when people were, some people were the most bearish. I remember people, uh, they're like, oh my God, this is so bad for the industry. Everything's dead. It'll never come back. How could any big institutional investors trust this? Blah, 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 blah. All the nonsense that has nothing to do with Bitcoin and really only emphasize the extraordinarily high value potential inside of decentralized services. From Bitcoin all the way through to Ethereum, I mean, even the decentralized index that Ethereum has offered, you know, with Uniswap, these are amazing technologies. And I, I don't think we've, I think people still often underestimate what it means to have a peer to peer marketplace, um, you know, and what it means for someone to be able to potentially play. You know, someone in the Philippines can't buy Netflix stock, but they can buy Bitcoin. So since then, we're up 124%. It does look like we hit our final last point of supply. And I suspect that we're on our way to around $40,000 Bitcoin. I don't think that Bitcoin is going to really slow down until we start to hit into this next area. Um, again, coming from the previous high. Now, one of the things we talked about is the overall macro nature of a trend as well. So here, the previous top of the trading range is around $69,000. Now, if we go all the way back here, this was an important point. Um, actually, let's open up our previous Bitcoin chart. Um, this We haven't touched this since 2020. Um, and this one highlights really well what we were paying attention to in the beginning of March 11th and when the pandemic started. The pandemic basically signaled the spring. It was literal blood in the streets was the time to go long and the time to be the most invested in crypto. But all the way back here, the previous high of 2017, around $18,000, did mark an area of our new, um, uh, basically what became a reaccumulation. But this moment of distribution, 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 our primary, sell, uh, primary support, our selling climax, our move into the automatic rally is kind of similar to what we're seeing today. Um, ex the only difference here is the time frame. Now, just for an example, from the previous all-time high to when the market had fully broken out, it was 1,103 days. Now, you know, we live in a world of time, and whether people want to recognize that is, it is not linear, it's rather cyclical. And because of that, we have the cyclical nature. We are 941 days through this current market cycle. In my mind, we're not in the heat of the bull market yet, but we are not far away from it. Maybe the next two to 300 days. Over the next year, I believe we're going to see a complete change of character in this entire market. Um, so if we go back to what we're looking at now, one of the important parts of comparison to is the previous two trading ranges. From the selling climax, the automatic rally was approximately 500 days. From where we are in primary support, which I mark here, to where we are now, we're approximately 500 days. So we're fitting up the timing of this market perfectly. And we had talked about this before because when we were when we were all the way back here in March 2020, you can go look at all these videos. I was extremely bullish when everybody was bearish because there was all these people dying and a new, oh a new virus and we got to lock down and it felt like the end of the world for many people. 
the hardest thing to do is to be able to shift your sentiment and understand that when those things are going on, it is actually extraordinarily bullish. Right now, with all these wars and all these changes of of the way people operate together, it's very bullish. Again, it's hard to see it that way. It, it does take like almost a sociopathic like hat that you have to wear to go, oh, wait, all this stuff is going wrong in society. I should be long. <laughs> but that's that's the truth. That's one of the hardest things about the nature of this market. I wanted to look at Fetch. Again, some of you asked like, oh, well, why do we just not only invest in Bitcoin? Um, first off, Bitcoin, if, you, if you're in a private group, um, oh, actually, we've got a, 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 a something exciting for you guys at the end of the video as well, so stick around. But if you're in the private group, you'll know that Bitcoin has been our, our North Star and guiding light since we started this channel in 2017. When you've got a winner, just keep investing in the winners. The problem is I like trying to find new ideas early. So that's not really a problem. It's just what we like to do. And at the crossroads of AI and I, I guess cryptocurrency or, or some type of cryptographic proof, um, you've got a huge potential there. In the future, what I see is the likelihood that AI be takes over everything. The way, you, the way your phone works today, this is all going to turn into a new AI operating platform because there's no reason to like click and point and do stuff the way we've done. It's going to change everything. So what's going to happen is you'll just talk to your phone. You'll go, I need a flight with lay down seats all the way to Bali. And then I want a Airbnb with these, I want to need air conditioning. And it's going to be able to go out and find you all of those specifics without you having to type it in and just ask. And it'll be, it'll get very good at it. So instead of going to Expedia or to TripAdvisor or to air Emirates Airlines to book your flights, the AI is going to do that for you. And what you're going to likely get is cryptographic proofs and APIs paying each other small amounts of money to make this happen. Now, I don't know if Fetch is going to facilitate that, but the narrative around these two things is going to be explosive. And we've seen that already since November. Um, and this when when Bitcoin started. Fetch is up 700 percent, so it's done significantly better than Bitcoin by about six X. That's not a small amount. But more importantly, what we look for is these big change of characters are outside of the trading range. Once you have an accumulation range and a break outside of the box, this becomes a very noticeable, um, you know, it's, it's hard to explain because we're not always just paying attention to a market sentiment like, oh, people are going to FOMO in and start buying. Um, they're taking these long term approaches to accumulation. So we have currently for Fetch a 200 day accumulation range. Normally, when you have long term accumulation channels like this, you can expect around at least 100 days of explosion to come outward. So from the automatic rally to here, we had around 200 days in our previous accumulation range, this one here. And from the breakout side of the box, effectively to the all time high, we had around 100 days and 365 percent growth effectively. So from where we are today with 200 days of accumulate 200 days of accumulation from this, this is just the start of the breakout. I suspect we have about 100 more days of this. Now, where it goes, does it go to previous all time highs for fetch? I'm not sure. But the narrative of AI and crypto is huge. The potential for these AIs to pay one another and the APIs to need to talk through Expedia to TripAdvisor to Arab Emirates to your bank account. That's going to become the dominant narrative because there's just no better way to do those things. So at the intersection of AI and crypto is, or, or, or cryptographic proof, we'll say, is extraordinarily powerful. Let's take a look at Link here for a second on the well on a much bigger time frame. Don't Those smaller time frames are not super helpful. But well, again, what I wanted to point out here is the accumulation time. So we have approximately 500 days of building an accumulation range for Link, and then all of a sudden, a massive change of character. Once this change of character takes place, we can usually assume we have um, about, let's say half, sometimes longer depending on where we are in the market, but usually about half of the accumulation time. So that could be upwards of 200 days of upward market movement in Link over basically within the next year as the bull market starts. And Link actually led the bull market in 2019 by, by quite a bit. It moved outside of the box, like way back here in, in 2019, it was one of the only ones that was performing well. So when you have something that's, that's helped lead the markets before and there's a change of character in it, you don't have to invest in Link, but understanding that that change of sentiment is notable throughout the market. So one of the ways we're, we're gonna do that here now too, quickly we're just gonna look at the total crypto market cap. Um, this is including Bitcoin. 
here to me it looks like um, first off you don't really like to use so there we go total crypto market cap uh, what appears to be a pretty decent inverse head and shoulders but more importantly or right at the top of the trading range here and hitting our previous area of resistance is likely that we're going to continue upwards here for all of these tokens once FOMO sets in people think they don't have enough of whatever it is that that is they're trying to buy now Bitcoin still our North Star and guiding light but at these intersections of um, AI or cryptographic, sorry, cryptographic proofs like Link, it makes a lot of sense to follow those trends, even if you're not investing in them, because they're going to give us overall market sentiment analysis. So I also wanted to go all the way back down to the DXY. This is the dollar index. Um, this is unique. Um, the, the dollar actually appears to be in a reaccumulation channel itself. And right at the top of the box forming here as well. So this is the first time we've seen a real change and decoupling between Bitcoin and the dollar and not just Bitcoin and the dollar, but this almost this entire ecosystem and the S&P 500, all these other rather plain Jane vanilla investments, it's performing better than. This is gonna get a lot of investors interest moving. With the S&P 500, you know, we had been following this for many months because it, it was, I mean, this is actually just for fun here. This is when Michael Burry told everybody to sell. E Michael Burry was like, sell every, hold on, where's my red, where's my red quick, there we go. Michael Burry told e people to sell everything pretty much right here. He's like, oh my God, sell everything. You can mark the tweet. He like nailed this one perfectly at the bottom for the wrong direction. <laughs> it was an inverse Kramer. Now, I think eventually he will be right. I think he's going to be justified eventually, but I don't think he's going to be justified today. The fact that the United States government is already openly indicating that they're just going to print endless amounts of money and give it away to these governments to bomb people. Well, first off, that's just fucking ridiculous. You have to ask yourself, like, at what point is paying taxes to these governments actually a criminal offense? Because you know your dollars are just going to bomb people somewhere around the world. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. As a non-U.S. offshore banking taxless citizen, um, I'm blown away that people still are okay with this, that they're, that for any government that does this, like we, why are governments not more focused on peace? But nonetheless, war is profitable for us because that means people are dying. And hey, <laughs> as much as it sucks to put the sociopathic hat on, you got to play the game because it's been going on for longer than we've been alive and it will continue long after we're dead. But this was a big change. This is again, the first time Bitcoin has started to go up when the rest of the market is going down. So I, I haven't seen this before, you know, um, let's actually compare with Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin to USDT Tether, uh, and then make these two a little bit bigger here. Um, boop, why is this not giving me? Oh, come on now. Um, Oh, dang, now just floored the other one. Should have opened this beforehand. Excuse me, I'll just turn, uh, I'll just turn this off. And I'll, ex I'll explain what is, what's happening here. So normally Bitcoin moves pretty, a uh, fairly lockstep with the rest of the market. In fact, our entire crypto sector had moved fairly lockstep, lockstep with the rest of the market. This is the first time Bitcoin's gone up while the S&P 500 is going down. For all of the people, all of these big hedge funds, all these big money managers who are looking at the stock market thinking, wait a second, there's something inversely now correlated to the S&P 500 is going to massively pique their interest in Bitcoin. And the fact that the rest of this market is not geographically refined to just one place, that people in the Philippines can buy Bitcoin or Link, they can buy whatever they want. They can't buy the S&P 500. It really opens up the doorway for investors who were always regulated out of investing. Now, I've long since uh, tried to iterate the idea that I don't think people should be regulated out of investing, even if it hurts them. If you invest in a scam, you should consider that a lesson. You shouldn't get upset at the scammer. You should get upset at yourself with not doing the work that you needed to do. If you make a mistake, it's your fucking mistake. We need education, not regulation. And education comes from t touching the burner when it's hot and going, oh my God, wow, the burner was hot. I should have known. But nonetheless, people try to regulate and then you find less people can participate. But right now, we have a global decentralized market that more people can participate in. And it's had a massive shift of character. 
Um, there was, what else did I want to look at? Oh yeah, just really quickly, I wanted to take a look at the NASDAQ as well. Um, so the NASDAQ was in a, a bottom of its range, SOS or um, up thrust and then after distribution. It looks like this is turning into an up thrust and distribution. Now it doesn't mean that this trading range is over. Um, you know, one of the things we know that it, it's, it's very deceiving in the middle of the range, like uh, first off at the top of the range, so you shouldn't be taking longs here unless we bounce outside of the top of this green box. But effectively, we're still in the range, you know, w and we've seen this before where we've seen a massive capitulation basically back into the middle of the range before continuing higher. If they start to print money again, which they're doing for all these guns, bombs, and weapons, there's no reason to think that they won't eventually try to do this with the market and just pump the markets again. I think that there will come a point probably closer to the next election where what they do is they use this monetary heroin to stimulate people to be happy while voting for whoever it is they think they should vote for. I'm not a general conspiracy theorist, but after 2020, you don't get everything wrong. It's impossible to get everything wrong. Even a broken clock is right t at least twice in a day, right? So th these guys have gotten everything wrong every time. There's been no positive decisions. Now, there are people who like to come out and ask for, oh, understanding, well, we were making uh, ideas based off incomplete data. No, you were ignorant, unaware of the data that was being banned or censored, and you made decisions based off government propaganda. So government propaganda means that the government wants a narrative, is designing a massive media campaign to force that narrative. Meanwhile, the true data is still underlying the sentiment. It's one of the weirdest things. Um, but anyways, we have written about that extensively in this month's uh, updated newsletter. Um, oh, also, by the way, this, uh, just for those of you, if you want to join, we have, I'm giving away five 20% discount codes for our monthly membership because I'm a huge fan of this time of year. The October to November height of the Pleiades, not that I like the Pleiades as like some alien space race nonsense, but that's the shoulder of the bull. And every year we run through a giant meteor stream called the Tord Meteor Stream. And it's one of my favorite astronomical events. You just get to see all these shooting stars fly through the sky. If you can see the sky, if you live in a city, you won't be able to see this, but it's happening. I promise. <laughs> Go out, drive out past the city. You'll get to witness something beautiful. If you type Bear Den 22, the next five people will get 20% off the private membership. Um, again, we don't normally give discounts, but just because I love the Day of the Dead and it's been one of the only ritualistic celebrations that have managed to hit every culture. It's not just Western culture. It's not just Mexican culture. It's Indian culture. It's Hopi culture. It's Native American culture all around the world. Seemingly, for some reason, they celebrated this day when ancient star gods may have fallen from the sky and destroyed the world. So for five of you, there's a 20% discount. If you if you felt like joining, there's never been a better time because we don't. I think this is the first time we've given a discount code since like 2020. We don't need to grow the group any bigger, but we do like to make sure that our support staff is uh, finding ways to make this work better because uh, I couldn't do it without you guys. So, and, and also, it's the only place I can talk about stuff that I would normally get banned for on YouTube but can't get banned for by reminiscing on in the private newsletter. So it's a way to cultivate uh, some type of freedom of speech with the private group as well. So for those of you that have signed up over the years and supported that, I'm, I'm deeply grateful because it's been a space that can pay for itself so that I can continue to do that because it costs me money to do all of this to begin with um and as much as i want to try to provide you guys as much value for free which is why we do all these videos um so for five of you, you get a discount code anyways enjoy enjoy your uh enjoy your day of the dead uh check out the markets i i think we're going to around 40 42 thousand dollar bitcoin we are We'll, we'll check in basically back then, but with the massive character changes and link and fetch uh, and a, basically across the board, some 40, 50, 60 percent of growth in some of these in the last two weeks, that signals to me something that the market has not done since early 2020. So um, thank you all for joining us. I appreciate you guys. I've got some more videos coming your way, uh, but I'm going to make a little trip here. So the next few videos will be kind of like vlog videos. So uh appreciate you leave your thoughts your comments your questions down below if you haven't subscribed please subscribe uh maybe you got unsubscribed i'm running ads now so that hopefully youtube actually pushes these videos a little further so if you had to watch some ads i apologize it's not that we need the money for that it's just it was just we it helps youtube actually push the video further 
um but yeah free speech um follow us uh and or whatever you know who don't listen to someone else <laughs>